I got to see Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 early. And in this video, I wanna break down everything you need to know about the most realistic medieval RPG game. Firstly, the map's going to be twice the size of the original Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's still set in medieval Bohemia around 1403, and the new map is going to encompass the city of Kutenberg. And another part of the map is actually going to include the picturesque Trosky Castle and the surrounding lands known as Bohemian Paradise. So as you've probably guessed, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is much bigger and better than the original game. The open world map is double the size, the story is much longer, with now over five hours of cutscenes instead of three, but also there's going to be tons more side quests, activities, and just a bigger world to explore. Not to mention all the new RPG systems and mechanics that you experienced in the first game, they've all been improved and added to, with new range weapons, crafting, and an immersive criminal system that actually reacts to your actions. I'll be going over everything new in this video. But the best news is, is that Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is coming out in 2024 this year. So you'll get to experience everything for yourself pretty soon. If you're excited about the next game and you want to see it get as much exposure as possible, please do take the time to leave a like on the video. It makes YouTube start suggesting it to other people that haven't heard of this awesome medieval game so they can experience it too. And don't worry, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 has been written in such a way that you don't actually need to have played the first game to understand what's going on in the second one. That said though, I would highly recommend that you play the first game anyway. It does a great job of setting up the story and just in its own right is an incredible game experience unlike any other medieval game I've ever played. It's also aged really well. Graphically, it still looks as incredible as everything you see in the new trailer. But if you're wondering what I mean when I say this game is going to be much bigger in scale compared to the first, by comparison, in the first game, we were literally just dealing with issues of small nobility, bandits trying to rock the economy, and threatening nearby villagers. Whereas the second game just scales everything up. We're now going to experience the problems of night. In fact, it's strongly hinted that you might even be able to come a night. We're also going to be experiencing the full-scale battles that come with that. And we see multiple in the trailer. And the game is historically accurate, so you can figure out the locations of where all these battles are based. But once again, we will be playing as Henry of Scalitz, who in the first game starts out as a peasant who's never held a sword in his life. Obviously by the time of the second game, Henry's now considered to be a young man, but he's still very much a blank slate and he can be skilled and molded into the kind of character you want him to be. So you won't be porting over your save file from the last game or anything like that because you'd just be super overpowered. But just like in the first game, you'll be able to master all your combat skills, including the new weapons like the crossbow, hunting, alchemy, drinking, horsemanship, the Houndmaster, which was a feature added a little bit later on after launch, lockpicking, pickpocketing, stealth, and even more skills that are going to be added to the game. Now, in the first game, we could sharpen our swords, but now there might actually be a blacksmithing skill because we see Henry hitting his sword on an anvil here. But beyond skills, we can also mold Henry into a charismatic diplomat or a dirty thief or maybe even a noble knight. It's really up to you how you want to play this game and who you want to make Henry become. But one thing you're going to want to consider is actually the impact that your actions are going to have on the world and how others will then react to you. You see, the game's crime system has been improved massively. Now if you go around developing a bad reputation for stealing or attacking innocents, the crime system not only reacts to it, but it's also going to remember the kind of person you are. The villagers are going to start being suspicious when you come poking around their homes or shops or even just, you know, walking into the village. People will come up to you and be like, oh, you know, not this guy again. Last time he was here, he killed someone. Compared to Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, where every NPC would be like, oh, look, Henry's here to see us. So this is actually quite different to the original game and even other RPG games that would normally punish you and then just sort of forget everything that happened. In the gameplay, we see an NPC gesturing at the body here that you've probably just killed 
and is probably accusing you of what you've done. And then we get some guards confronting you and maybe asking you to leave the village. Now, depending how far you go down this road of criminality, you can indeed get punished for your actions. Here we see Henry actually getting branded on the face for his criminal deeds. And as you can imagine, this is going to impact the rest of your playthrough. If you are branded as a criminal, other nobility and people generally will just treat you differently. So this truly shows that your actions have consequences. And in the same way, you as Henry can now actually react to how other people react to you, choosing either positive or negative speech options. For example, when you are, I don't know, drunk and naked, people comment on that on the street. And now you can also reply. You can tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or you can tell them, uh, piss off, man. Now, we can't talk about Kingdom Come Deliverance without also mentioning the combat, because there's been quite a few additions and changes. The combat in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is similar to the first game, but I've actually spoken to Toby, who works at Warhorse Studios, and he said that the combat's going to be far more accessible this time around, but it's still going to have difficulty and be satisfying to master. For those who don't know, the combat system is a bit like Mountain Blade, and a lot of people found it a bit janky in the first game. Though I personally absolutely loved it. You have six directional attack options and you could also combine different angles of attack together to perform weapon combinations. And the exciting things about these different weapon combos that you could do was that they're actually based on real medieval training manuals that knights would employ in battle. Now everything in the game is historically accurate and the combat while initially hard to grasp is extremely rewarding to learn and it just feels epic once you've mastered it. You feel like you've actually achieved something. The game also has a stamina and health system where the more hurt you get, the less max stamina you're going to have. This really simulates the fatigue that you would have during a battle. Also, two new ranged weapons have now been added to the game in the form of the crossbow and very early firearms. Very early. The crossbow looks incredibly impactful. Historically, it didn't actually take much skill to wield a crossbow compared to a bow, for example. So it was actually a very accessible weapon in medieval times. And the bolts could easily penetrate plate armor and even splinter shields. And yes, you can even use a crossbow on horseback, as we can see in the trailer. And interestingly, you could also reload it on horseback too. And I'm pretty sure this was a very difficult thing to do. So I'm kind of curious as to how that works. The early firearms, on the other hand, hadn't quite replaced archery or even crossbows at this point. In the gameplay, we see that they're mainly used in the form of hand cannons, so a very primitive and early design of guns. Quite literally just a metal cylinder that can be loaded with gunpowder and aimed at the enemy until the fuse finally ignites the powder, causing it to explode within the weapon and fire an iron ball from the nozzle. Now the reload time, accuracy and firing speed really shows how far these weapons had to go before they became, you know, like the Aquabus, for example. But I do love that it's been included in the game. And I am kind of curious because historically there's some debate whether we kind of developed guns from gunpowder in the West or if that was actually brought over from China. I believe it probably was. And it kind of makes sense that from the Mongols and then the Cumans and then invading Bohemia with Sigismund's army that it would arrive in Bohemia at this point in time. But I'm curious like how they're going to add that to the game and if there's going to be a story behind it like they did with the trebuchet in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. I really enjoyed that part of history. But gameplay wise, it looks like the hand cannon is going to be a lot of fun, but definitely not like a weapon you can just run around with reliably. Now, as for the start of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, after the events of the first game, you'll be starting out as a squire to the knight Hans Capon, and you'll be sent to Trosky Castle to meet with Otto von Berger. Now this castle is located in Bohemian Paradise. Now this is located in the northwest of the Czech Republic or Bohemia back then. It's a still a it's still a place you can visit today though. It's beautiful. Like I'll put some images on the screen. It's probably about a day or two's ride from where the first game takes place. But as Daniel explains in the Warhorse Showcase video, in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, this seems to be a separate part of the map. So it sounds like there's two different maps. One's around this castle and the other one's around Kuttenberg. And the Bohemian Paradise area of the map is very much like a nature reserve. 
If you've played Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, you'll know that Warhorse did an incredible job of capturing the forests and bringing them to life. It's the exact same case here. And then you've obviously got the Castle of Troskai, which is super iconic in its silhouette. It has these two towers on a rocky mountain, and it's just surrounded by countryside and farmland. And knowing Warhorse, there'll be lots of hidden secrets and things to find here, including nature and animals you can hunt. We also see a battle taking place in the meadows surrounding Troskai Castle, and there seems to be some kind of nightly skirmish going on here, where we're actually trying to get to the castle for some reason. This is obviously quite the contrast though, compared to where most of the game is based, which is the city of Kutenberg. Now compared to any cities you saw in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, Kutzenberg is one of the largest and richest medieval cities in the entirety of Bohemia. It's just this massive urban sprawl with densely populated buildings and businesses, and the reason why it's so wealthy are the nearby silver mines. Obviously, with this enormous wealth comes a lot of power. The city had the same powers as the old town of Prague, which is the capital city of Bohemia. And we know from the first game and history that at some point, Kuttenberg in 1402, during Wenceslas's imprisonment in Vienna, Sigismund actually attacked Kuttenberg and by the beginning of the following year, managed to seize it and completely ransack the town. Now, Kuttenberg was loyal to King Wenceslas and defended by its silver miners. Eventually, though, the battle ends in Kuttenberg's render. Now, timeline-wise, I believe this battle could have already taken place by the time Kingdom Come 2 Deliverance is based, but don't quote me on that. I mean, we could even experience that battle, but from the trailer it looks like we're experiencing other battles in other castles. Now without going into first game spoiler territory, we do see a lot of recognizable faces from the first game, which we'll definitely be clashing with, hopefully with swords. We also see gameplay of two different siege battles in the trailer, one of which has Henry and Hans under siege in, and the other we actually see the use of the trebuchet once again. Now if you enjoyed the music from the first game, Jan Volta is once again going to be composing the music for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I thought the first game soundtrack was incredible and I've no doubt he's going to do the second one justice too. We also get to see a wedding taking place in the game and it is highlighted that romance will be possible. We also see Henry dancing with a fair maiden and then again wooing a fancy noblewoman. So just like the first game, I'm sure we'll be able to have some raunchy experiences there. Now, if you're still sitting there wondering what kind of game Kingdom Come Deliverance is, I'd highly recommend checking it out for yourself, or even if you don't have time, you can just check out my playthrough from the link over here. It gives you a good idea of what to expect and also what the intro to the story is. Apparently though, the pacing is gonna be even faster and it's gonna have even more action packed into it. If you guys are excited and want to hear more about the game as we approach the launch, make sure you hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.